Hey everybody, this is Matt with TechnoX Royalty Free Music. How are you guys doing? Okay, so this Friday night, I just decided to stay in and program an instrument off of Native Instruments Massive. And Native Instrument uh, Instruments Massive is an excellent instrument that I use a lot in my electronic dance music. And uh, I've been trying to program more and more instruments from scratch uh, utilizing this instrument and I want to show you something really quick I'm going to basically find it here it's called sequenced something or other a sequenced one here and it's basically a kind of sci-fi kind of sounding instrument So uh, as you can see, it's kind of it's got that sequence there that it kind of progresses throughout a measure, and it has a lot of cool effects going on with it. And uh, if you guys want to know how to build it, I'm going to do that right now. We're going to start by basically resetting everything to its uh, default standards here, and then we will go ahead and modify our first oscillator and. Really, we're not going to do much to this yet. Uh, we're going to keep it in the square saw wave option here and basically just bring the pitch down by about 12 steps here. And that will basically finish the modification until we deal with the LFO. And then we're going to turn on our second oscillator. And instead of a square wave saw wave, we are going to write in a smooth square here. We're going to basically put our intensity down to about, well, I would say that's about one-fourth the way. We'll uh, also turn on our third oscillator here, and we'll go for a sine triangle and bring our wave table position all the way down to about like the, I would say it's like the nine o'clock position over here. And that pretty much completes our uh, oscillator modifications here. All right, and so basically the other thing that we're going to do is bring our filters up to serial, uh, our mix down to filter two, and then we are going to basically bring our filter two uh, all the way up. And uh, really in this instrument, I have, act have actually not set anything on this uh, filter, honestly, but in order to enact some further changes on this instrument, you kind of want to basically ha have everything route to filter one first and then filter two second. Um, and I believe that kind of creates um, a, single, a singular instrument and it will make everything good. All right, so before we do anything else, we have to deal with our voicing here. And if you guys remember right, the voicing is uh, basically how we affect our stereo spread. And because we have a maximum of eight here, we can actually specify more, but we're just gonna bring eight over here. And because that means that we are playing eight different oscillators at once, then we probably should bring our master volume down by quite a bit so we don't blow our ears out. All right, so, and then the other thing that we're going to do is that we are going to set our pitch spread our cutoff maximum by no more than 0.10 and then bringing bring up the actual pitch cutoff by just a little bit and that will basically um, make it so there's a little bit of a pitch uh, adjustment between the uh, different oscillators going on here and then once we do that we'll turn on our pan position and then uh, just bring out our uh, stereo spread from all the way full to just about a little bit less. So as you can see, we have that stereo spread. We don't need to do anything else here. All right, so once we get that done, what we need to do is set our LFO up. The first one, at least. We need to set up our LFO 8 and change it from an LFO to a stepper. And then we are going to sequence our LFO stepper 
at a ratio of one sixteenth notes. We uh, will um, keep our restart and then our uh, uh, keep our sync as well. And then we will basically start drawing in our notes. And our first uh, uh, step will be at five steps. And then we go to three steps on the next one. And then leave this one at zero and we go back up to about five steps here. And then three steps again. And then uh, for this next batch, we will go up to seven steps here. Then three, then seven, then three again, and then eight. And then three again. All right, so that is our stepper pattern. And then we are going to drag that stepper pattern all the way to oscillator one. And then we are going to affect that oscillator one by a maximum of 12 steps. Now what this does, it allows that stepper to basically step through all of the steps of an octave. And it won't affect anything in a really weird way that's not really contingent on a note here. So I can play this to you. Okay, so the one thing that I actually forgot to do is I forgot to bring this up by 24. Right. So we are going to bring this up by 24 steps, but then we are go also going to drag uh, oscillator 8 into the uh, uh, pitch adjust position, position here and also affect it by 12 steps. Okay, and that provides a very nice uh, balance to what's happening down here. So basically it provides a very layered effect. Um, so other things that we can do to basically affect the sound, what we're going to do basically is drag uh, stepper number eight over here and affect the wavetable position of the uh, third oscillator here. And that basically affects uh, that position by just a little bit, not much. But what we really want to affect is this second one over here. And we'll bring the intensity up here and change the uh, uh, adjuster here from a spectrum to a formant. Okay, and that is absolutely fantastic. We are getting to that scientific... A science fiction feel here that uh, that you are hearing in the other instrument. All right, so we are basically going up to the filter here, and we are going to an excellent filter called the band reject. And I've found that this is my favorite filter filter of everything here on Massive because it because it is basically paramount to a lot of the effects that I'm I'm experimenting with, a lot of formants and a lot of just a filter adjusts sounds so much better with this and you'll see exactly why and we are going to start by once again dragging uh, stepper number eight to the first position here and adjust that by a little bit as you can see we'll go from the uh, 10 o'clock position here to the two o'clock and you'll uh, uh, you'll hear the filter adjust really quickly Okay, so really, really awesome. All right, and we actually do not need to do uh, anything else, I, I believe, with stepper number eight. But the second thing we want to do is uh, utilize a second LFO to be able to uh, uh, adjust just a little bit more and have more of a dynamic feel to the sequence that's going on here. So we're going to set up the LFO by basically turning on our sync and basically having the sync run at, at a really low rate. We're going to basically run it at a, 
rate of four whole notes here. We'll bring up our X fade curve to all the way up. So we have a pure sine wave here that we can work with. And we're going to uh, basically drag an LFO number five to the second position here. And then we are going to adjust it to basically affect the cutoff by just a little bit here. We're going to bring our bandwidth down by just a little bit here and uh, bring that LFO5 up to the adjustment slot here. And we are going to adjust it by the opposite way that we adjusted the cutoff here. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that's absolutely fantastic. All right, so one of the other things that we are able to do is uh, utilize some things like inserts to affect the sound of our instrument. We're going to turn on insert number one, and we're going to select a clip, a hard clipper here. We'll bring our dry wet down to the 10 o'clock position here and bring up the drive by just a little bit. Okay, all right, uh, and with this sort of high effect, it's probably good to have a little bit of reverb going on, so we'll basically adjust that. We'll turn the reverb up and uh, turn the dry wet down to about the, I would say, the 8 o'clock position here. The size, I turn the size up so we have a little bit of room in the room. The density down, and we have the color going all the way up. Now, the color is basically kind of how your treble your uh, and or bass is affected in the reverb. So the frequencies that you are trying to reverb throughout your mix, uh, the color determines exactly what frequencies stay and what, what uh, don't when, during the reverb process here. Okay, so... We've got that done. We can also affect the uh, EQ by a little bit, and this is where the uh, the real grit comes out, and uh, we can basically adjust it. So you have that high end squeal that basically can um, make the low sounds turn great. But we'll have to adjust this a little bit, uh, and I'll show you how uh, when playing higher notes and. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring down the low shelf by a little bit. We'll bring the frequency frequency up by just a hair and the boost down by a little bit as well. But we are going to push the high shelf up to like, like two or three o'clock position here. So you can hear that that lower uh, note has a very good high end that just makes a really good kick to it. You can actually adjust this low shelf if you want a little bit more bass. And basically what you're doing when you bring up the low shelf is you're scooping out the mids and making for a really nice sound. But because the high, instrument, uh, high notes are also affected by this, this high shelf can basically, it, it has a tendency to basically bring out too much of the high frequencies. If you get too high, uh, it might, some people who are sensitive to higher frequencies may, may feel a little bit uncomfortable with that. But I did find a way to get around that, and that is to have dyna dynamic uh, note shifting using this macro control over here. What I just did is I clicked on the, the keyboard uh, 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 notes here that basically takes into account the note values here down on the keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here and I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more. So there's a little bit more high shelf uh, when the higher uh, lower notes kick in. But then I'm going to basically drag this backward. So the higher the notes, the more the, this high shelf is basically pushed back. And there's not as much. So there's not as much. Uh, uncomfortable high frequencies.
So you can hear from that really, really high note that uh, even though the high shelf is pushed um, on the lower note, that it's not actually affecting the mix as much when I, uh, I press a higher note on the mix. And there you go. That is the instrument. It's uh, pretty cool. And I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And uh, I will, let me actually just show you a, another thing that I did with this uh, band reject. I'm going to open a sound for you. And it's a sweep up bass that I just did. It took me about five minutes. Where is it at? It is this one right here. And uh, that's a uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool sound. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to just really quickly go over what I did here. You can, it's pretty obvious. Uh, what I've got basically is on oscillator one, I've got math three with a pitch adjustment of negative 12. And then uh, I've got an envelope here, which has an attack at uh, nine o'clock here, a decay at 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock with a level of about 9 o'clock here. Nothing really special on the back end here. But then I've got oscillator 2, which is also math 3. And uh, it's pitch, pitch shifted down 12 uh, steps here. And oscillator 3 is a smooth square. Uh, pitch adjust, it's not pitch adjusted at all. And then... During, uh, with this uh, uh, modulation uh, uh, oscillator here, uh, basically I've uh, modulated one, uh, uh, oscillator one here. Uh, so and with uh, the uh, phase adjustment here, uh, directly at 12 o'clock with uh, no uh, pitch adjustment at all. Then you've got the band reject and basically what I have here with the band reject filter, I've got the bandwidth at 12 o'clock here, the resonance at 12 o'clock here as well. And this is basically the, I mean, this is enough uh, unless you want to do something more extreme here. And then basically what I've done here is I've dragged envelope one here to the cutoff and dragged the uh, uh, cutoff frequency adjustment from the five o'clock position here all the way to the eight o'clock position. And then with the boost frequency, I've got the boost up to about two o'clock here and the frequency down to about the 10 o'clock position here. But once again, I utilize envelope number one and uh, set the adjustment at two o'clock here. And then what else? Uh, there's no really noise here at all. Let's see what else. Uh, you've got a maximum voicing of eight uh, voices. Uh, the pitch cutoff is where uh, maximum is 0.11, and I've just adjusted it by a hair. And once again, the uh, the stereo spread I've set to just uh, under maximum here. And that's basically the instrument. It's pretty simple. And uh, I will come out with more of these if you like. But uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you guys next time.